Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do my March wrap up. I know March is over. It's April now and it's kind it feels kind of weird because I feel like March was a million years long but also I can't believe it's April so I'm feeling very conflicted right now. I don't know it's a very weird feeling but March was an interesting reading month. So I read 12 books one graphic novel and three manga so or at least three manga series but um yeah i don't know it, it's not my like best reading month it seems like i read a lot and honestly i don't really remember reading most of these because i think they were way earlier on in the month and towards the end of the month i started to get really slumpy i think i didn't read for the last week of march i was just kind of like meh I'm over it. I, I don't want to read anymore. Um, so that's fun. But uh, I don't have that many books that I absolutely loved. I have quite a bit um, of four and below. So I do have a few four stars that I really, really enjoyed. But I didn't love as many books as I usually do in this month. It's because it's pre that's pretty sad to me. I don't know. I, I I feel like I usually have quite a bit of four and five stars, so to have four and below is just like, oh, okay. Also, I have some controversial book opinions in this one. I feel like I'm gonna make so many people upset with some of my feelings about these books because I read some popular ones and I'm not really feeling them, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I guess let's start. Let's start with my two and a half star ratings. I only have one book in there, but let's start there. So the two and a half star rated book that I'm going to talk about is very beloved in the thriller community. I know so many people love this book. It is a lot of people's favorites and I'm kind of nervous because I just did not vibe with this book. And that is In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This book is basically about the main character, Jessica, who's going to her 10-year college reunion. And she's planning on coming to this reunion and showing everyone that she's changed and she's this confident, successful, awesome, amazing person. And she's not the little mousy nobody, I guess, that everyone remembers her as. But... All those years ago at college, there was a murder in their friend group, and yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a very typical uh, reunion plot, um, and I'm gonna be honest, this was extremely boring. It was so, so boring. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. You're reliving their college days, and they're all really rich and annoying, and... I mean, I only really liked like one or two characters, but they're all just like those rich kids and they're arrogant and they, they're they just so annoying. And I know that the characters were supposed to be annoying. I completely understand that is where the author was coming from, but I just could not stand them. I could not stand them. And the main character, Jessica, is the most annoying character. Honestly, I could not stand her. I understand that there's a point to her annoyingness, her irritatingness. But, oh my goodness, I have never disliked an unlikable character so much in my entire life. Um, didn't care about any of the characters, didn't really care about the murder, didn't care about their college experience. I just didn't care. Uh, the only reason I didn't DNF is just because I wanted to see if I was right. Um, the ending was pretty decent. That's the only reason it's like a two and a half star rating. I did debate about giving this a three star rating, but I did not like it enough to give it three stars. <laughs> so that's why I left it at two and a half. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of sad just because I wanted that dark academia thriller vibe and I just did not, I did, I just didn't get that with this. It was just so painfully boring to read and I just didn't care, didn't care, didn't care. I know so many people love this. I know so many people love this. But for me, it just did not work, wasn't a fan. <laughs> so the next category is my three star category. I only have one book in that. And uh, it was actually my first read of March. 
and that is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez. So this is a short story collection and the problem I have with short story collections, even though I love them so so much, I just don't enjoy all the stories. It's very hard for me to love every single story in a short story collection. So this was just kind of hit or miss. The ones that I liked, I really liked, and the ones I didn't like, I just didn't like. Um, the writing is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the author has a great way with words, and I was very enchanted by the writing. I think if you like more gothic, understated, creepy, eerie kind of stories, this might be for you, um, but it just wasn't really my kind of thing. Um, but I didn't hate it. I enjoyed it. It was, it's very short, very easy to get through. It wasn't like I hated it. I just liked some stories and didn't like others. That's why I went just with like a middle ground rating of three stars. Um, but I would definitely check out more by this author. Uh, I'm very interested and... You know, I like weird horror, so if you like weird things, I feel like this is a good short story collection to check out. Okay, next up is the three and a half star category, and the first one is a very new, very highly talked about thriller at the moment. I know a lot of people have been uh, going on about this one, and it's very uh, hyped and popular at this moment in time and I kind of jumped on the hype and the bandwagon. I really liked the cover and I really liked the idea of this and that's why I <laughs> ended up buying it. And that is The Night Shift by Alex Finley. This is another thriller and in 1999 at a blockbuster video store these teenagers working were attacked and murdered and one teenager was actually the only survivor of the crime and basically 15 years later the crime is replicated just at an ice cream store instead of a blockbuster. So this has multiple POVs, you have an FBI agent, you have the brother of the person that was accused for the crimes in 1999, and then you have the sole survivor from the 1999 massacre. Um, okay, first off, I really listen to people talking about the 90s vibes, the whole like, oh it's nostalgic, yada yada yada, 90s, blah blah blah. Okay, I mean yes, in a sense this does have 90s vibes, but not really. There's only a few flashbacks to the 90s and it wasn't enough to make me go, Ooh, yes, lots of 90s vibes, very nostalgic, very reminiscent of that. Like, it wasn't enough. I mean, I feel like it was only 90s vibes because it was a blockbuster. <laughs> so, I mean, I was really disappointed by that. I wanted more. I wanted more 90s. I wanted more of that nostalgia that everyone seemed to be talking about. Two, I ended up guessing who the killer was, like really, 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 really early on. I remember telling my partner, I have a few suspects, and honestly, I'm pretty sure it's this person just because they're very suspicious because no one's suspicious of them. And he was like, well, let me know if it's true. And I was like, hey, I'm right. <laughs> so that was extremely disappointing because yeah, I, I hate when I guess the killer. You know, it's okay after a certain point in the book if I kind of piece things together just like barely before everything's revealed to me. When I figure it out so early on, like within the first few chapters and that, that's just so frustrating to me. That actually really irritates me and it kind of ruins my reading experience because I don't want to know who the killer is. I want that mystery to stay the entire time and this just didn't have that for me. I did enjoy the story. I did enjoy it. I love a final girl moment. I love a soul survivor moment. Um, so that was fun. I just, I don't know. I was expecting way more, especially from everyone's reviews of it. I was expecting to basically find a new favorite thriller and this just wasn't, it just wasn't that for me. So, um, I was pretty disappointed. I was pretty disappointed. Um, 
but I still enjoyed it and I finished it and it was fast to read and kind of easy to read. So that's why I settled on 3.5. I mean, I didn't hate it. I was just kind of frustrated with it. But overall, wasn't my favorite. I think it's a little bit more hyped uh, than it should be at the moment. The next 3.5 star book that I'm going to talk about, I feel like is a very controversial opinion that I have. I know this is a very well-loved book. Uh, I know this is a lot of people's favorite by this author and it is probably my least favorite so far by this author that I've read and I'm pretty sad about it because I really thought everyone was going to lead me down a path of loving this book but uh yeah no I, I didn't I didn't love it and that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager um so this is a haunted house story. It is about the main character whose father writes this book about their experiences in this haunted house and they get famous and she believes none of it. She thinks he all he made it all up and that it was all a lie and she's pretty resentful towards it because uh, the book has followed her her whole life and so she's very well known for this book and what her father said. And now her father has passed away and she has inherited the house and she is setting off to renovate it, to sell it, and she starts encountering things and starts wondering if her dad wasn't lying. So, um, I had high expectations, okay? I had high expectations. Um, I thought this was gonna be a home run, um, but it was just okay. It was just okay for me. First off, it's so slow and so boring. The first half was dragging. I was about to DNF it. I was like, this is, this is not working for me. But I powered on because I wanted to see if it was going to get better and I was going to like it. And Truth be told, I did enjoy the second half a little bit more. Unfortunately for me, this is just too similar to The Haunting of Hill House and the Amityville Horror. So this brought nothing new to the table. I mean, this is just a very, very typical haunted house story. I mean, this is like, I knew what was going to happen. This was not surprising in the slightest. The twists I saw coming. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised. I wasn't you know, in awe. I was like, okay, this is exactly, this is exactly how I thought it was gonna go. So I was very disappointed by that. Like I said, I did enjoy the second half more than the first half, which is why this isn't lower in my ratings, but it's just nothing special in my opinion. Oh my gosh. So many Riley Sager fans are gonna come for me. I'm sorry. Um, this is just nothing special. It didn't do anything for me. Maybe I just read too many haunted house stories and I'm just so used to like having something special that this just didn't, it didn't do much for me. So this is just not my favorite Riley Sager. Uh, I would not pick this one out of all of his books to read again. So, um, yes. I'm very sorry if Home Before Dark is your favorite. I know it's like everyone's favorite. Uh, it just, it, it wasn't for me. It was not for me. Okay, next up in my 3.5 star ratings is a book that I had to kind of think about for a really long time. I wasn't really sure how I was going to rate this book. The more I thought about it, the more I realized I didn't overly care for it as much as I thought I did. Um, so that was super disappointing because... I, I really wanted to love this book and it was one of my 2022 anticipated releases so it just wasn't what I expected it to be or wanted but that is Sundial by Catriona Ward. So I'm not going to talk about this plot really because I think this is a book that you should go into blind um, a lot like The Last House on Needless Street. Uh, so I'm not going to go into the plot but I'm just going to tell you my feelings. So the Last House on Needless Street was one of my favorite releases of 2021. I absolutely adore that book. I think it's amazing. I love the way it's written. I love the storytelling. I love the ending. I love all of it. This was just a letdown for me. It did not live up to The Last House on Needless Street for me. Um, I can see why a lot of people will love this book because I think it's going to be something that a lot of people really enjoy. It just doesn't work quite for me. 
One, uh, the animal cruelty is just, I don't really care for it. I don't want to read it. I don't want it. I just, I don't like animal cruelty in my horror, okay? It's just something I don't particularly like to see. And unfortunately, the animal cruelty is a large part of the story. It does have a big part to the larger picture, um, which I understand why and I understand the reasoning for it being included, but I don't like it and I didn't really want to read it. The animal cruelty in this is much more uh, on the experimentation side and messing with the brain and stuff like that. And it's not horribly, horribly, horribly graphic, but I think if you're uncomfortable with animal cruelty to any extent, it's gonna make you uncomfortable, it's gonna make you feel icky, it's gonna make you feel gross, you know, like it's gonna have those feelings. I feel like this was a little bit easier to digest um, because it wasn't the most graphic animal cruelty I've ever experienced, so I was able to kind of just read through it and get through it, but I didn't enjoy it, I didn't really want it, I didn't like seeing it, um, so that was unfortunate because it is a very big part of the story. Two, um, there's a creepy kid aspect in this book and I was really, really hyped for it, but unfortunately I just think that it didn't push enough in that realm. It didn't quite go as far as I had wanted it to. It didn't quite hit that mark that I was wanting or expecting it to. It just kind of fell a little flat for me in the creepy kid aspect. Um, I will say that her writing is absolutely stunning in this. It's a little mysterious, it's a little vague, it's a little um, odd, it's, you know, it's it's a lot like The Last House on Needless Street in that sense. It's confusing, you don't quite know what you're reading. So her, her writing is very engaging and I, I enjoy that part and that's why it kept me reading. Um, and it's a very fast read, I, I feel like I zipped through it pretty quickly, so that wasn't really you know, awful for me. But overall, I just don't think it's as good as The Last House on Needless Street. It's not as exciting. It's not as interesting. I don't care for the plot as much. Um, the ending was uh, fine, I guess, you know. But the more I sit on this book, the more I realize that it just really wasn't my kind of book. It wasn't really what I wanted it to be. So that's why I settled on 3.5. The next and last 3.5 star rating that I have is actually a manga and it is Orochi by Kazuo Umezu. So this is a like hardcover edition for uh, his older story so it's, it's a new printing um, and this is the first volume that just came out. So this has two stories in it, Sisters and Bones. And, um, you know, I liked it. I liked it enough. I thought it was entertaining. Uh, to me, it's a little more understated in the horror manga kind of category. It's a little bit more gothic and subdued. Um, I'm really used to Junji Ito and his, you know, page-popping, uh, art and stuff like that, so I'm I'm more interested in Junji Ito's style. I do know that Junji Ito cites this mangaka as an inspiration to him. Uh, to me, I personally just like Junji Ito's style more, uh, so this just wasn't as... just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I much preferred the second story, Bones, to Sisters. I thought it was more interesting and I liked the storyline a little bit more. Uh, but overall I did enjoy it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I think this is a good beginner horror manga. Like if you're not sure that you're gonna like Junji Ito or Shuzo Oshimi and you're not, you're not really sure and you don't know where to start, I feel like this would be a good one. It's not super, super intense. So I mean, I enjoyed it. I'll probably pick up volume two uh, when it comes out just to see how I like that one more. But it was pretty decent. It wasn't my absolute favorite manga that I've ever read, but it was a lot of fun. Next up is the four star category. I have um, quite a few books in here. So, you know, I, I, ha I think I have some interesting ones in here that I'm not sure if a lot of people will agree with my rating on, but we shall 
C. And the first one is Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier. So this was actually a book that I included in my five star prediction video. So sadly it did not live up to my five star prediction, but I did really enjoy it. So I gave it four stars because I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, this book is very wild. This is a WTF book. This is very... It's, it's an insane book, okay? It's a very weird, weird, weird book. And this is about a very wealthy couple who invite these people who are self-made success stories to live in their guest house and then they ruin their lives. That's their form of entertainment. The other person involved in this story is someone who basically has the opposite life as this wealthy couple. She's not had a good time, she doesn't have money, she doesn't have the uh, wealth and fortune and opportunities that they do, but she decides to take you know, life into her own hands, and uh, she ends up living in their guest house and getting involved in the couple's sick and twisted game. So, um, <laughs> one, this is, it's very much a dark comedy. This is, it's funny, but in a very, this is so messed up, haha, <laughs> I'm laughing, very on-the-nose humor. Um, it's definitely making a statement, and I did enjoy it. It's just a, it's very weird. It's a very weird story. I don't think everyone's going to like it. This is not going to be for everyone. Um, this is not going to be a, a type of story that everyone likes, and I totally get that. I did have fun with it. I was laughing. I was just flabbergasted most of the time. I was like, what? What is wrong with these people? What is happening. I will say it's a little bit predictable. I don't feel like this does anything crazy or groundbreaking in the sense of what kind of story it is. Um, I think it's kind of predictable for where it's going to end up and where it's going to go, but I did really like the ending and I thought the ending was really enjoyable and <laughs> that made me happy. Uh, but overall, it was a fun read. It's just kind of crazy. It's just, it's a bizarre story. It's a dark comedy. It's very much that. Um, I much preferred this to her previous book, If I Disappear, which was the podcast story. I didn't, I didn't like that one as much as I liked this one. I thought this one was much more fun. Um, so I, <laughs> I can, I, I know this is going to be a very, uh, divisive book. I feel like this will be something that no one agrees on. You either love it or you hate it. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those kinds of books. But I personally had fun with it. I thought it was weird and crazy and it was fun, you know? The next book in my four star category I feel like is gonna be a shock because this book has been getting bad reviews. People really are not liking and vibing with this book <laughs> at all. All. Um, I personally don't really understand why no one likes it. Uh, I'm very confused by the reviews, but honestly that doesn't really surprise me because I feel like with thrillers I'm always in the minority. I never agree with the like majority of the people, so <laughs> I feel like this is just me sticking to my usual ratings of being not the same as everyone else. So. Uh, if you didn't know, it is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Yes, this is Lucy Foley's newest thriller. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> this book is about the main character who comes to stay with her brother who is living at this apartment in Paris and she's kind of trying to get away from her life and kind of uh, try to start anew. And when she arrives, she cannot find her brother. Her brother is gone. He's not there. No idea where he's gone, but he knows she was coming, so suspicious. But everyone in the apartment building is also very suspicious, so she starts her hunt to try to figure out what happened to her brother, where he is, like, if anyone knows anything. And of course, everyone in the apartment building has their own secrets that they are hiding. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's 
it's a it's a typical Lucy Foley plot in my opinion. It's very <laughs> it's very much that. I don't understand why people don't like this um, because to me, if you liked her previous books, it feels the exact same to me. I don't I don't know it it. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but to me it felt the exact same as all her other stories, so I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't disappointed. I didn't like this as much as the guest list, the guest list I gave a 4.5, um, so I didn't like that one, this one as much as the guest list, but I really enjoyed this one. I liked the location, I liked the apartment building, it very much gave me Lock Every Door vibes by Riley Sager, which I also enjoyed. Um, I don't know. I don't know why people don't like it. I think people don't like it because it was more of a mystery than a thriller, but in my opinion, the rest of her books are also more mystery than they are thrillers. Like, she does a mystery thriller kind of combo. At least to me, that it, I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know. But to me, they feel very much mystery thriller. This felt the exact same as her other stories. Um, so I'm a little confused as to why everyone's hating it. I don't understand. I really don't. Um, I guess they think it's boring. I'm not sure. I wasn't bored. I was pretty interested. I liked the characters. I liked where the story went and I really liked the ending. So yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by this one. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> you all are going to come for me in the comments being like the Paris apartment was stupid. And I'll be like, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But I... I enjoyed it, so. The next book in the four star category is also one of my most anticipated releases for 2022, and that is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. So this is actually my second Simone St. James book. The first one I actually read earlier this month, and we haven't talked about it yet, but we will, don't worry. Uh, so I really, really felt like I was gonna like this one, mostly because look at this cover. Um, look at that rainy, beautiful, teal vibe. Yes, love it. One, this takes place in Oregon. There's rainy vibes throughout the book. Absolutely love that. I live in Oregon. I love the rain. It's my favorite type of weather. So this just like... I knew it was gonna mesh with my personality, you know? So this is a dual timeline in the 70s. These men were murdered by a lady killer. And this woman, Beth, who is very rich and young and beautiful, was the one that they deemed responsible for these murders. She went to trial and she was acquitted. The second timeline is actually in 2017 and we have the character Shay who is a receptionist by day and by night she runs a true crime blog called The Book of Cold Cases. And she actually comes into contact with Beth, the one who was acquitted for those murders in the 70s. And she jumps at the opportunity of a lifetime and asks to interview her. And Beth doesn't do interviews. So this is a very rare opportunity, but of course, there's some creepy, weird things happening. So, um, I really enjoyed this. I love when books include a true crime vibe, whether it be blogs or podcasts or anything like that. I just think they're really fun. So I knew I was going to like this one, and I really did. I liked the story. It was slightly predictable at a certain point. I really did know where it was going and that was a little unfortunate for me just because I wanted a little bit more mystery. I wanted the mystery to keep going all the way to the end and I just didn't feel like that was happening. I felt like I was a lose I was losing a bit of that mystery which was slightly disappointing. Um, I really, really, really like Shay. Shay is such a good main character in my opinion. I really... I really liked her. I feel like a lot of people aren't going to like her, but I personally really, really, really liked her. Yeah, I, I liked the overall vibe. I just wish I had gotten like a little bit more from it. I didn't like it as much as the other book I read by Simone St. James, which I'll talk about later, but um, overall I thought it was a lot of fun. I liked it. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy the true crime aspect. I think this is going to be a book that a lot of people 
end up liking. Okay, the next book is also one of my 2022 anticipated releases, and I included it in my five-star prediction. Sadly, it did not make it to the five-star prediction, but it did get a four-star rating from me, and that is Cherish Farah by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a very, very interesting story. <laughs> this is a very interesting story. So, I don't want to talk too much about the plot. I feel like this is a plot you kind of need to know not a lot about before you go into it because it's more wild when you have no clue what's going to happen. This is about two um, girls who are both black and they're best friends and one of them has rich white adoptive parents. The other girl actually kind of moves into being part of the family and she starts realizing some things about the family, some weird things about the family, um, and it's just very suspicious. It's all very weird. Um, so this is very much a social commentary horror novel, but it's also a very slow burn horror novel. So nothing's fully gonna make sense until you get all the way through it. You're gonna get some pieces here and there, but you're not gonna be able to connect everything together until the end when everything starts being revealed and you fully get the bigger picture, which I actually really enjoyed. And I'm not someone for slow burn horror. Um, it's not usually my favorite, but I really, really, really enjoyed um, this story. It's very weird, okay? It's very weird. The whole time I was like, what? what's happening? Am I, am I not seeing something? Am I, am I losing my mind? And I kind of like that feeling, the feeling that I'm kind of losing my mind while I read a horror novel. Um, it kind of makes me feel a little bit, it gives me an extra element of horror, you know? I think my biggest pet peeve with this is I just wanted a little bit more. I just really wanted it. I feel like at the end things started getting really dark and really messed up and everything when it comes together you're like whoa but it doesn't it just ends right it doesn't fully like conclude in my opinion and I just wanted like an extra chapter or something just like an extra few chapters I needed a little bit I needed a little bit more okay it stopped when it was getting really really dark and I was really really excited and then it just kind of ended and the ending is pretty ambiguous which is not my favorite thing um, I like more of a concrete ending I like an ending that pretty much lays out how it is because I don't like having to think too too hard on an ending um, I want it to be just kind of straightforward so for me it wasn't my absolute favorite ending but but I could look past it I could look past it um, I know a lot of horror novels compare themselves to Get Out, the movie, um, but I will say so far this one takes the cake. It is very, very similar to Get Out in my opinion. Probably the most similar any of the books I've ever read have been to Get Out, which I was super, super, super happy about. But I will definitely be checking out more from this author. I'm very interested. I really did enjoy this book. I think it's very good. I don't think everyone will like it, but it was a hit for me and I, I did enjoy my time reading it. So the next and last four star rating is actually a graphic novel that I had a lot of fun with and that is The Sad Ghost Club by Lizzie Meddings. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but this is very cute. It's about a ghost who is very anxious um, and this ghost <laughs> takes you on their day with their anxious thoughts and then some things happen. I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to ruin it, but it's very, very, very cute. Very, very sweet. Um, I feel like Aaron, who was in college, would have absolutely loved this, would have just sobbed reading it. Um, it was, it's very sweet. I feel like a lot of people are going to be able to relate to it with anxiety and depression and they're just going to be able to feel very seen and validated with their thoughts and their feelings, which is something that I very much appreciate as someone who struggles with anxiety and depression um seeing my thoughts and actions and uh feelings 
told through another perspective makes me feel less alone and makes me feel less isolated which is something that anxiety and depression really do seem to do they make you feel isolated and so reading something like this makes me feel like hey you're not alone it's okay it's it's okay and this was just such a nice little breakup it just like it it made all the like it made all my bad feelings go away. It was just so precious. It was so, so cute. I have The Sad Ghost Club 2, which I didn't get to in March, but I'm hoping to read it this month in April because I feel like that one's just gonna be just as cute and sweet and like heartwarming and it's just gonna be really nice. I, I really like this. Um, I think a lot of people in school, like in college or um, maybe graduating high school or, you know, even younger than that, I think a lot of people will be able to connect and uh, get something from this story. And it was just really, really sweet. Next up is the 4.5 star category. I have one book in here and that's it. <laughs> and that book is An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. This is my first book by this author. A lot of you told me that I was going to love this and you are correct. I did love it. It was great. You know I love a wintry, isolated thriller, okay? That's my jam. And so this was just delicious. This was delicious. This takes place at an inn where a bunch of people come to stay for a weekend, a weekend getaway, and a blizzard comes, knocks out electricity, strands all the people, and then murder starts occurring. I know, crazy, suspicious, weird. How would that ever happen in an isolated wintry thriller? I know, it's predictable, but it's a plot that I just love, okay? It's a trope I love. I love, <laughs> I love when they're stranded in an isolated area and then someone dies and then, you know, everyone's suspicious, okay? It's, it's interesting to me. I love it. It's a great trope. So I highly enjoyed this one. Um, I loved the characters. I loved the mystery. I didn't figure out who the killer was until right before the author let me know. Like, I mean immediately. As soon as the author was inching toward it, I went, oh my god. I know who it is. But surprise, surprise, literally like two paragraphs down, shock and awe. And I was like, man, I did not see that coming. So I was pretty, pretty happy about that. Um, it wasn't a five-star read. I don't really know why, to be honest. It just didn't feel like a five-star read. It just wasn't, like, my absolute favorite wintry thriller, but it was very, very close to being perfect. It was very, very close to being an all-time favorite. It's still a new favorite, honestly, because it's a lot of fun, and I love wintry thrillers. You know that. Come on. It's my thing. I... Look. It would just be a waste if I didn't enjoy this book. I really do want to check out more from this author. I've heard mixed feelings on a lot of their other books. I know this is like everyone's like favorite by them, but I still, I still want to check it out just, just for fun. Uh, so if you have any books by Cherry Lapina that you enjoy, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, it's my five star category. There are two books and two manga, so four total that we are going to talk about. And I'm excited for these ones. I have very, I, I love them, I love them. The first five star read that I had was The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. Okay, I heard so many mixed reviews about this book, everyone, either loves it or hates it, okay? Like, there's no in-between that I've seen. Either it's, like, a favorite or you hate it. And so I was very nervous. I wasn't sure I was going to like it. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this, but oh my god, I absolutely loved this book. Like, it was just so... It was so good! It was so good. I loved it so much. And this is why the Book of Cold Cases just didn't hit five stars for me, because this one was so so good. Like, I loved this one. It's a new favorite for sure. Absolutely, hands down, I love this book. I, I love it. I love it. I know that some people don't like it, but it worked for me. It worked 
for me. So this book has a dual timeline as well. The first timeline is New York in the 80s and it is about Viv who starts working at the Sundown Motel and things are a little weird at the Sundown, right? Like things are a little odd and she can't quite put her finger on what's going on but there's something off about this place. The other timeline is New York in 2017 and we have Carly who is actually the niece of Viv from the 80s and she is fascinated by the Sundown Motel because her aunt Viv actually went missing, mysteriously vanished, never seen again, and Carly is just absolutely enamored with the story. She's very fascinated. She wants to know what happened. Just like her aunt, she starts working at the sundown to try to get answers, and she starts experiencing some weird things. So look, this has everything I like. Mysterious disappearance, ghosts, a weird creepy motel, suspects, that have suspicious tendencies. Look, this was just a home run. I It worked for me. I know a lot of people didn't like the dual timelines because they felt like it was very repetitive. For me, it didn't feel like that. I loved the ghosts hauntings. I thought that was so fun. I loved the setting. I loved the characters. I loved, I love where it went. The ending was so sad, but like in a good way like it was very bittersweet but I didn't really see any other way that it was gonna go so I did enjoy it I don't I don't know this worked for me it worked for me very well I loved everything about it it's I don't know okay I just loved it it was a great book very enjoyable I was flying through it I was super sucked into the story and the characters and the investigation and the disappearance and all of that. Oh my goodness. I was so, 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 so into it. I just, five out of five, would recommend, love it. Amazing. Okay, the next five star book rating, the last book in this category, actually, because the next uh, ones are manga. But uh, it's been a while since we've seen this author here on my channel. It's been a hot minute. So I'm very excited to have The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates be in my five star category. Oh my goodness. So this is number two in the Gravekeeper series. The first one is The Whispering Dead. If you don't remember the first book, I gave a four star rating. So this one, it jumped up a whole star. I know look Darcy she did it she did it with this one it was oh, I love these characters I love the plot I love the the vibe of it I love everything I just can't wait to see where we're gonna go with these characters next I don't want to talk too much about it because this is book two so I don't want to give anything away that you don't know from book one um but it's just this was a this was a great sequel i was really hoping that i was going to enjoy this one more than the first and i did i just this was so good oh my god i just love these characters i love these characters so much darcy knows how to write characters that i connect to and i feel just like i feel for i want to be their friend i want to know them i want to root for them i want to I just want to, I want to have experiences with them and that's what she does for me in these books and this one just surpassed all my expectations and I'm so excited that it did. I'm so happy. Um, it was just so good and I really missed reading Darcy. I really did. Um, it was nice to get back into the rhythm of Darcy's writing and just feel comforted and it was like having a hug from a long lost friend. I know that sounds so cheesy and lame, but look, I love Darcy, okay? I love Darcy's writing. She's she's just one of my favorite people ever to to ever write. Just so I just love everything by her and this was just so so freaking good. I'm I really want the next book. Like I know I'm going to have to wait forever for it, but I am anticipating it. I'm anticipating it. Extremely anticipating it. I can't wait. Um I just can't wait to see what this series has in store for us. I am 
I'm so happy. So the next five star review and a manga that I have to talk about is Blood on the Tracks Volume 7 and 8. Uh, yes, I'm kind of behind on this series. It took me a while to catch up. I know, I'm mad at myself, okay? But hear me out. Number 6 left me at a very sad point and I was just like where is this going okay you can't you can't bring me here and then leave me okay you can't and so I was very upset and so when seven and eight came out I was like you know what I'm gonna wait then I'm gonna wait because I know these are gonna hurt me and I know I'm gonna want to read them so fast and then I'm gonna have to wait for the ninth volume the ninth volume is actually coming out this month in April which I am so excited about because eight that left me on one of the biggest cliffhangers ever, and I'm screaming inside uh, to read number nine. I don't want to talk too much about this manga because I don't want to give away anything or spoil anything, but if you don't know, it's a manga by Shuzo Oshimi, and this is about a relationship between a mother and her son, and it's a very strange, um, messed up relationship, and lots of stuff happens. Um, these were very emotional. They made me very hurt. I know that sounds weird, but I'm just, I, <laughs> this story takes a lot out of me. Every volume I just kind of feel drained after reading it. I feel very lost. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to read next. Um, it's amazing. Shuzo Oshimi is a great, great, great mangaka for psychological horror. Um, he does an amazing job. His artwork is very clean and um, it, it, it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it communicates exactly what it needs to communicate. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, this story is fantastic. It's one of my favorite mangas so far that I've read. Um, I know it's ongoing. I believe there are going to be 12 volumes. So, I'm very nervous for how this series is gonna end. I'm um, very nervous. Uh, this is a very intense story. It has a lot of um, a lot of things involved in it. It's very dark, um, but it's it's very well done. I, I I enjoy every volume I I ever read. Every volume has been a five star for me. <laughs> the whole series is a five star, but every volume has been a five star read uh, for me. So. Yeah, I, I love it. I can't wait for volume nine. I'm, I'm dying inside for it. So the next and last five star rating that I have is actually an entire manga series. I read all of it in two days. Um, it was emotionally traumatizing, emotionally draining. I have a book hangover from it because it, I just all the emotions, but that is Erased by K. Sanbei. I think that is how you say the mangaka's name. I looked it up, but I cannot find how to pronounce it. At least everyone's saying it differently, and I don't know, so I hope that is correct. Um, if it's not, please let me know in the comments down below. I would say this is more of a thriller, mystery, crime type of manga. It's not necessarily horror, but it is, it's pretty dark for what the story is. This story is about Satoru, who is 29 years old, and he is just meandering through life. And he has this ability called Revival, which is actually a ability that rewinds time. And it's more of a hindrance to him. He doesn't really enjoy it, but when a tragedy happens, he actually ends up using the revival and it sends him back in time to his 11 year old self. And he's very confused at first why he's this far back when this tragedy occurs because it doesn't really make sense. And then he realizes that it's no mistake that he was sent back this far and some things in the past need to be changed in order to fix what is occurring in the present day. Um, this is an amazing story. It is very emotional. It is very dark. It is heartwarming. It has, it's just, it's a lot, okay? It's a lot. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I love everything about it. It's 
absolute perfection. It's probably my all-time favorite manga that I've ever read, and I already knew that it was going to be because I've seen the anime like three times because I'm obsessed with it. Um, so <laughs> I knew as soon as I finished the anime that I needed to read the manga, and it took me forever to find all of the volumes because this thing has been sold out, okay? This has been sold out. So finally I got it all, read it, I fell in love all over again. Uh, reading this for the first time was like experiencing every emotion that I had the first time I watched it all over again. It's, it's perfection, okay? I don't know what else to say about this. It's beautiful. I love the characters. I love the storyline. I love, I love everything about it. I love the way it ends. I love, I think it's very satisfying. I think it's very... I think it's very dark, but um, I think a lot of people won't think it's super, super dark compared to, you know, other manga. But to me, I think it's pretty dark. The The content is pretty uh, disturbing and messed up, especially because it deals with children as well. Uh, but it's just... God, it's so good. I love the investigating. I love the friendships. I love the hopefulness. I love the intensity. I love everything about this, okay? It's absolute perfection. I will never not recommend this. Um, it is, this is different from the anime. I would say, uh, especially the ending is the absolute most different. There are some little changes throughout the series, uh, but the biggest difference is the ending. The anime ending uh, comes off a little anticlimactic once you read the manga ending. Um, it was very intense. I was very, I was very nervous because I didn't know what was happening. I hadn't seen this, I hadn't seen this ending before, so I was freaking out, um, but it's just, it's really good. I think it's spectacular. I think it's very unique and different from a lot of manga and anime that I've seen and to me it just is absolute perfection. I've said that like seven times, I know. Um, I cried so many times while reading this. So many times while reading this. I'm an emotional wreck because of this series and I highly, highly, highly recommend it, okay? It's beautiful. Definitely, definitely, definitely read it or watch it. The anime is just as good and it follows the manga pretty closely. Like I said, the ending is the really big difference. There are some slight differences, but the ending is the most dramatic difference. But I highly recommend both the anime and the manga. I think they're both fantastic. I did it. That is my March wrap up. That is the end. That is everything I read in March. Um, it was kind of a controversial month for me, I feel like. I read some things that I feel like I don't have the same opinion as other people. It was very, it's a very mixed kind of month for me. Um, I read some very popular books. I read some very anticipated books. I read some books on my backlist. I read some manga. I read a graphic novel. I was doing all kinds of things in March. It was crazy. I was I was all over the place, I guess. Let me know what your favorite and least favorite book was in March, uh, what you're hoping to read in April, if you agree or disagree with me on any of these books. If you disagree, let's keep it nice, let's keep it easy breezy in the comments. I don't wanna, I don't wanna have any fights breaking out. Not that you all fight in the comments, that never really happens, but still. Yeah, let me know. I want to know if you disagree. I'm sure, I'm sure so many of you disagree with me. <laughs> that's fine. Um, that's it for me. That's the end of the video. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm tired. This was a long, long video. These wrap-ups are always super long, okay? They're so long, but you all ask for long videos, so you better be watching. You better watch to the end. You better watch to the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so we can become friends, talk about books, movies, manga, thrillers, horror, all that spooky fun stuff. And I hope you are having a wonderful day, night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.